Binding Contracts is notably one of the best money makers in the game. But what if I tell you that this method requires very low gear and very low requirements just to be able to make a decent amount of GP per hour? And if that's not enough for you, this method is AFKable after the initial binding contract making process that we'll get later in the video. So if you're ready, let's dive right in. So if you haven't caught on from the intro, it is going to be killing Hellhounds for the binding contracts. As for the requirements, they are super, super low. You do need 45 Slayer and 45 Summoning in order to bind a Hellhound inside of a binding contract. You also need the Dagon Bind Mystery unlocked through Archaeology, which does require 68 Archaeology to get done. But that is necessary in order for you to be able to make the binding contracts to do this method. As for the recommended, I do recommend 92 Prayer, but we can touch this a little bit deeper in this video because you actually don't need Prayer if you are using Necromancy. Level 70 Invention for the Old Eye Coil for this method, using the Old Eye Coil within the Resource Dungeon is massive. And you'll see later on in this video when I show you a little bit of the gameplay on how to do this method. But in order to get into the Resource Dungeon, you do need level 55 Dungeoneering. Now, you don't need access to the resource dungeon for the Hellhounds because right outside of the Hellhound resource dungeon entrance, there's a bunch of spawns of Hellhounds out there. You're just not going to kill as many per hour since they spawn kind of further apart. Now, doing this method my way, I was able to get 30.7 million GP per hour using Necromancy. You could also expect around 110,000 XP per hour with Necromancy, plus you can also gain about 40,000 XP per hour for your constitution since these things don't have too much health and since they did the rework for how you gain experience with constitution, this is a little on the low end. As for the gear setup, I'm running with the tier 90 Death Dealer Necromancy set, which you can honestly do this in the tier 80 Death Dealer set if you really wanted to. Highly suggest that you don't augment these because they don't dissolve over time and augmenting them will just eat into your profits as well. And that goes for your tier 90 weapons as well. Even if you are using tier 80s, don't augment them. It will eat into your profits if you augment them. So I highly suggest, again, do not augment any of your gear for this method. As you may have already have seen, I did not use an aura for this entire method. Now, I do highly suggest if you are to go with a melee route or a ranging route to maybe use a vampirism aura here and then throw a demon horn necklace on and bring a bone crusher so you can use soul split while also regenerating your prayer doing this method. Next up, we do have the Zuck Cape, which is mandatory for anything you want to do with Death Skulls, of course. We are going to be using Death Skulls with this method. Also, you will notice that I do have a Blood Amulet of Fury on the inventory for the setup for you guys. But in the gameplay, you'll notice that I'm using a Demon Horn Necklace with the Bone Crusher in the inventory. Because I just thought I was going to be using Soul Split or Deflective Melee, but it didn't come to that case. Next up, I do have the Luck of the Dwarves on. Now, this is also before I reread the wiki that they do not have a rare drop table. So, I would highly suggest putting on DPS ring here for your sake. Now, I do have a Nexus to hold all of my ruins. But in this method, all you're literally going to be using is your Ectoplasm for just your Conjures. I also have the Scripture of When God book. Now, in the beginning of the gameplay, in my hour of Hellhound Killing... I did have it on and active, but then I realized I did not need it. So I turned it off about halfway through. So if you guys have the new Underworld Grimoire and you don't want the extra prayer XP from the Bone Crusher, you can easily equip the Grimoire so it can do an auto loot for all of the bones straight into your ritual box. Now for the inventory, this was my initial setup before realizing that I absolutely don't need almost anything inside of this inventory. I honestly thought I was going to need overloads while doing this method, but during the gameplay, you will see that I just turn off my potion reservoirs and I'm withstanding everything about it. Now, I was going to bring a holy scarab with me and use it through this method, but I realized that I didn't need my prayer up for any kind of deflect melee or the soul split. So it was never even used. You'll actually see me dump it off into the loot pile just because I didn't need it and I wanted some more space to collect binding contracts. You're also going to need your magic note paper so you can note all of the binding contracts from all the kills that you get with the Hellhounds. 
As for the bone crusher, if you have it in your tool belt, good for you. You don't need to do too much, but maybe to toggle it on and off, you know how to do that if that's the case. Now, you don't have to bring it. Now, if you want your prayer XP, sure, you can bring it along, but you don't have to, and it'll give you more space to make this a little bit more AFKable with the Hellhound method. Of course, you're going to bring your binding contracts, which you're going to be doing about 700 kills after you've made the binding contracts within the hour. Next up, you're going to have all of your cannonballs, which this method does take about a thousand cannonballs. And then you're going to have your ODAC coil, which I will tell you exactly where you need to place within the resource dungeon to make the best possible profit of this. Now, before getting into the actual method, first off, you have to do the agonizing part of making your binding contracts. Now with this method I'm about to tell you, you can make about 700 binding contracts in about 20 minutes. So with this method, all you have to do is you go to Taverly, you bring all of the materials, you bring your pouches, your blue charms, your spirit shards, your hellfire metal, and your blood of Orcus. Once you get over to the obelisk, there will be a trader there called Majestix. What you're going to do is you're going to take your blood of Orcus and your hellfire metal, and you're going to sell little by little to the trader in the store. Now I say little by little because for as long as your materials sit inside of the trader's store, it starts to deteriorate. So you'll notice that I have 1400 of each Hellfire Metal and Blood of Orcus and at the end I only make about 682 binding contracts. So over time it starts to dis disappear from the store. Now the place to go for them is the Hellhound Resource Dungeon. That is the number one place if you don't have the requirements to be able to get into that dungeon then just the Taverly Dungeon will do. Now, the fastest way of getting there is using your Dungeoneering Cape, just clicking on the Taverly Resource Dungeon, and it will pop you right into the Taverly Dungeon right in front of the entrance. If you don't have the pleasure, you're going to have to run through the Taverly Dungeon itself. There's a couple little things you have to do, like getting a dusty key to get through the Blue Dragon Room, but you can probably look that up and get through that pretty quickly. Now, once you made it into the Resource Dungeon, what you're going to do is you're going to run all the way to the back corner, and you're going to set up your Odak Coil and fill it with some cannonballs. As for the Rebo Bar, it is going to be as simple as simple can be. You're going to use Death Skulls, Conjure Army, Ghost, and then you're going to use Soul Strike first, and then Soul Sap. Since the Odai Coil is going to be doing majority of the killing, you're hardly ever going to be using abilities. So this Revo Bar itself will allow you to gain enough adrenaline over time to be able to do Death Skulls every time it is off cooldowns, and then you're also going to have your Conjures up and running around. You want to make sure that your ghost is at least out there because that's your healing process with this method. Now, Soul Strike is an AoE ability. So when you use a Soul Sap and you gain at least one soul and you actually use a Soul Strike, you'll be hitting multiple targets. And then all you have to do is literally sit back, relax, and let the show begin. You're just going to have to check your inventory every so often to make sure you're not full. And just magic note paper every single binding contract that you have. Don't accidentally click on a binding contract and summon a Hellhound. That's just a waste of a binding contract. So after doing about 20 minutes of binding contract making and about 40 minutes of actually killing the Hellhounds, I was actually able to sell all 700 above GE price for 90.6 million GP. With all of my expenses, that is going to leave me around the 30.7 million GP per hour mark. To me, who is a novice at the game itself, is pretty insane to have 30 mil plus an hour on something that's so AFKable and such easy creatures to kill. That also requires very low gear and inventory. But that does come to the end of this video. If you guys found anything useful, drop a like and maybe even consider subscribing for future content for money makers and novice PVMing when it comes to bossing in the game. Until next time guys, stay safe. See ya.